Um, we're going to have our panel now with, Jay, with uh, James, Mark, and Isolt uh, and talk a little bit there. Um, and then we can, and then we'll wrap up. So we'll, have, we'll talk uh, for about 15 minutes. And uh, we might just kick it off by uh, talking about sort of the early days and how you got started. Because one thing, like with Patch, as I mentioned, is we're trying to create this sort of cluster of people who are like-minded and, and create really an environment conducive to thriving. Um, so might ask you, I, I know Isolt, I've heard you talking about, say, Launchbox before, to just say a few words on how sort of, what, what was the environment for you, for each of you, when you started your respective uh, companies and, 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 and ventures? Um, if you, uh, Isolt, you, do you want to take it away? Yeah. Um, so I started when I was um, still studying, and um, initially was un, uh, we did it under Enactus. So um, that was really useful because obviously you get to meet other students that are also working on um, are working on different kind of social enterprise focused projects. And it did kind of help you um, find ways to better integrate it with your um, university work and life as well. Um, but then Launchbox really was the opportunity for us to, I suppose, you know, make mistakes and learn from them and try again and speak to people and research. And it was coming into Launchbox where we'd actually um, had a few fails um, just beforehand and when we came in we were a bit deflated and we found ourselves just surrounded by the right people and the opportunity and the experience um, that we like from other people that really kind of I suppose motivated us and helped us move forward so um, I, I, can't, I can't imagine our journey without it but uh, it was just an, uh, an incredible really opportunity coming straight out of university to be able to do that. Yeah, sure. Uh, and Mark, I know I've heard you speaking about when you were your first, starting your first company in Oxford. How did that like affect you and uh, your how how you got started, really? Uh, yeah. So um, I mean, we we basically aimed for a demo day uh, with a, a sort of um, uh, an organization called Seed Camp. Um, so I sort of put together a demo video based on some some code we written for our PhDs. So actually, very similar, really, to uh, probably a lot of people here. So. Uh, yeah, I think you guys are well on your way, which is uh, very impressive. Um, yeah, so uh, basically, my, my co-founder was a former, um, uh, like a, a, a colleague uh, during in my PhD. Uh, so I think you know, being surrounded by interesting people, like you're saying at the start, I think is, is so critical because you, know, you can refine ideas and you know, just sort of be um, inspired by each other and sort of take take people in each other in different directions that you might not uh, uh, do individually. Um, you know, having that right mix of talents as well, like you know, kind of a, a mixture of technical expertise and uh, you know, interests in different domains and, and, and the complementary skills. Um, yeah, and, and the other thing is like you know, it doesn't take that much to get started. I mean, we started the company in a public library, you know, so uh, and then we were to move into a co-working space. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, all these things are one step at a time. You don't have to be super sophisticated, uh, and uh, people will help you. You know, the world is full of. Uh, People who actually really want to see you succeed and want to to uh, be you know sort of invest or you know kind of uh, you know, join in a project or you know so if, if you're doing something interesting and people can see the potential in this, um, you know that there's a lot of stuff out there to, to to help you along. Right, and before we go on to James, I might ask like who who were say some people or what were some examples of help that you got early on, whether it was like with uh, So off the back of the first demo day we went to, um, there was a whole collection of other entrepreneurs, uh, founders, uh, angel investors, and um, you just learned an awful lot very quickly from, from that set of people. Um, and, and some of them would sort of go out of their way to sort of you know, pay it forward and say, okay, well, I'm going to introduce you to this person because this is relevant to your project or, you know, um, you know, people aren't necessarily writing you a check in five minutes, but they, they, they can help in, in all sorts of different ways, especially just kind of um, like guiding you to work on the right things. And um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Hey, James, might ask you, I know you were probably, you were in a little bit of a different situation to Isolt and Mark when you were starting off Coder Dojo, but whether it was for Coder Dojo or other companies that, uh, the other the companies that you've been involved in as well, like what's the environment like? Who did you get started with? How was that sort of conducive or how did it affect your, your work? Yeah, I mean, I think with with Kodorojo, um at the start, the it kind of felt like pushing a, a boulder downhill because uh, also at the time I was working in this like other startup and it was towards the end of like sixth year, which was getting no traction. 
And like they say that's like a really good heuristic for like if something has traction, it feels like pushing it downhill versus pushing it uphill. Um, that said, when things get pushed downhill, they can crash into a lot of things. <laughs> um, so there was also like this kind of baptism of fire of making like tons of mistakes and um, really trying to have a lot of people around me who could give me advice um, or forgive me. Um, so like the, the theme that's been talked about here, but like surrounding yourself with people, having these feedbacks, uh, feedback loops, having advice is absolutely critical. And like, I mean, what Patch is providing in terms of like bringing these people together is um, is pretty incredible. Like, you know, also when I was in Cork, when I was like, yeah, before I left home after the leaving cert, I felt pretty isolated as well. And like definitely had a lot of like online friendships. But yeah, like getting to Dublin, like getting in the entrepreneur community, I'm still the only person to be banned from sleeping at Dogpatch because Dogpatch offered Coderoja an office space before I had like a fixed address in Dublin. And that was a pretty big concern. Um, but just like trying to meet up with anyone and everyone, get ideas. Already like in the chat here, I've seen like a bunch of names who are like incredibly important in our journey and like meant a lot to me. Um, so yeah, I think that the, yeah, the, as Mark said, like reaching out to people and, and talking and getting feedback or them giving you introductions, or maybe if you make that connection six months down the line, they, they think of you and can introduce and see so said, just making, having that right environment to fail and, and get those learnings out of the way was, was pretty, pretty critical as well. Right. And Aesol, it might be interesting as well to talk about, say, I don't know, people that helped you early on and. Uh, with Food Cloud and that were sort of instrumental there. Yeah, an incredible amount. I think uh, thing, when you're starting quite young and without very much experience, you rely on an incredible network of um, people who are willing to help. And fortunately, um, you know, the experience that we had was that there were money. So um, through all of the mentors that we would have initially gotten um, in Launchbox and then we were in Launchpad, so we had six months of really being part of the community in Dublin and getting to know um, very many people. And some of the people that helped were the people who kind of, who gave us um, negative feedback about the solution as well and actually kind of looked at us and said, you know, I don't think this is going to work and asking them why and finding out why. So like people that were working in um, the food industry and in the charity sector who just couldn't see it possibly working um, probably gave us some of the best advice because at least we knew then what we were trying to tackle and the problems that we were trying to overcome. Um, and, you know, the connections that you make, a lot of the um, people that have helped us in our journey we're still very well connected with today. Um, so I think it really is about building a wide, um, a wide network that um, you do kind of stay close to and that are there to lend expertise in areas that you know you're going to need help, whether it's now or in the future. And, you know, obviously programs like PAT and Dog Patch um, in general is a great way of having that network and being able to uh, stay connected to it as well. Sure, you're right. And well, actually, and James and Mark, feel free to j jump in, or and Isol, respectively, feel free to jump in at any time if you, if you want to you know, go, go ahead of me, you know. Um, one question that Isol said was there with people giving feedback and helping you figure out, like, negative feedback and what you need to change. Uh, Mark, would you mind, like, talking about sometimes maybe whether it was a pointy or plink, maybe? Uh, I know, say, I have one specific example in mind, but I, I'm, I'm sure there are others. Um, but say where, where you started out with something and then sort of changed dramatically uh, over time, you know? Where, where our project changed or kind of... Yeah, the where, where, where your conception of yeah. sort of what you should build or what, what you wanted to work on. I, I, I'm, I'm eager to okay, see... Okay, I, yeah, I think I know what you have in mind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so... Um, but when we started out doing doing pointy, um, so the idea of pointy is to index the contents of, of local retailers. And um, my first idea about how to do this was to build a, a robot, like a Roomba robot with a with camera on top of it, that would drive around the shop every night and photograph what was on the shelves. And that would be how we get the live inventory. And I was absolutely deadly serious about this. And I worked on it for really a month. Like when I say worked on it, I kind of like thought about it, like sort of fleshed it out. And the reason I rejected the idea was I thought that the, the mobile phone subscription for getting the data from the device would be too high. And that, that was like my, my reasoning. I was like, and in retrospect, I was like, it's totally crazy, right? But I mean, but but through thinking through that problem, you know, you kind of lead yourself to, you know, maybe a refined version of us, a very refined or a different version, or like, you know, an iteration on that. It could be very different. Um, so yeah, I think don't be um don't be afraid to like think crazy thoughts and uh, because you know, questioning things, thinking like, why is things this this way? How can I make it different? 
And you know, even if you, you, you go via sort of circuitous route, if you keep asking those questions, you often end up in, in interesting places. And then, yeah, and feedback as well, like, you know, you'll get a lot of negative feedback, right? That's, that's normal. Uh, you have to sort of be persistent, but just the right amount of persistence. Like you don't want to be so persistent that you're, you're doing something crazy forever or that that's not gonna work. And so, you know, if you're getting overwhelmingly I suppose it's 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 an art to listening to negative feedback to some extent, um, you know. But there'll be a lot of it, and it's just, it just happens. I mean, and, and people change their mind very quickly. I mean, I remember we had one investor who told us, um, you know, what you're doing is just completely impossible, and then a month later you're saying, "How can I invest?" You know, so like all these things can change quickly. So sure, yeah, and you know, maybe when Starling comes online and we have cheap mobile data, you can get a Roomba to scan yeah, the, that'll be the answer to every shop the next day. <laughs> Um, James, any 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 similar examples? Things you were thinking of building changed? Humanity? Yeah, I, I think in in the listening to negative feedback and being willing to change direction has been pretty key. So I kind of had a weird one where like Kodorojo is really the the first proper thing that I worked on, and then when I went to work on other projects and companies, um, a lot of them just like totally flopped and failed for a myriad of reasons. Um, so there was definitely like a a, a luck element or timing element in the first place. And like, I had to re-examine my whole approach to um, identifying problems and, and, you know, value that I was creating. Um, and a lot of it did come down to um, throwing out a whole bunch of experiments, seeing how people reacted. Um, as Mark said, like questioning norms and precepts um, and this whole idea of like trying to figure out why things actually exist. So th the concept of resource, uh, of research, and really important to me in experimentation and then having like proper ways of quantifying of quantifying that um and like what i learned is it's not so much that you have to be like intelligent or, or be super deep in a domain but if you have um enough tenacity and, and will talk to enough people and will self-educate you pretty much figure out anything or enter any domain or identify people to partner with um so yeah really um the whole notion of like investigation and discovery and experimentation became like super important to me um identifying which folder to push to keep on using that <laughs> yeah. yeah awesome well we are that's it that's pretty much it from us so listen uh, we're gonna wrap up the panel now um james is and mark thank you all very very much for uh taking part and um this is it uh i'm gonna say a few words but first of all Thanks very much for taking the time to join us today and uh, for giving your time to interview the questions